So then it comes down here, and then it comes into all the gut area here, okay? So in the gut, it breaks down into the, by the stomach into two branches. One goes to the front, one goes to the bottom and out, and it goes down to your colon. So why am I so interested in what's going on in the gut down here? Well, you all know I'm very interested in the gut. Why am I interested in the gut? Because there's another huge representation that my vagus nerve in my gut will affect my brain and can affect my heart as well. And my vagus nerve over here is going to affect my leaky gut and my microbiome as well. And I already told you all that I believe that all inflammation starts in the gut. All inflammation starts in the gut. So anything to do with the gut, including the vagus nerve, is of interest to me. If I can hack your vagus nerve and make your gut work better, you will have less metabolic endotoxemia. That means your leaky gut will be less. Therefore, things that should stay in the sewer will stay in the sewer and not get into your bloodstream. If you have a leaky gut, as a result of dysfunctional vagus nerve, or your vagus nerve is, is not working properly for multiple reasons, which I'll, I'll show you in a minute, you're going to get more leaky gut. If you get leaky gut, you get lipopolysaccharides and, and interleukins and, and other inflammatory molecules getting out from your gut into your bloodstream and then going to your whole body and causing inflammation. Chronic inflammation. Most diseases today are chronic inflammation. Look, you guys are not dying of dysentery or, or leprosy and all those bad things, right? So it's very important to understand this chronic inflammation, where does it come from? Where does most inflammation come from? It comes from your gut. Now, sometimes we also do bad things. You know, we put things on our bodies and whatnot on our body. But I'm saying it comes from your gut. That's the biggest threat you have. You have a hundred. Uh, you have what? A hundred trillion bacteria in your gut. And not only that, but you got the wrong bugs in your gut. <laughs> fine, you got a hundred trillion. Fine. But you got the wrong ones there. Why? Because you killed off the good ones, right? So when the bad ones are in your gut, what are they doing to your vagus nerve? They're stimulating it. They're making it dysfunctional. So when they produce, when those bacteria produce bad substances, neurotransmitters, they'll go up the vagus nerve and they can travel all the way into the brain. Now that should scare you. Do you want your bacterial products to travel up all the way to the brain? So there's a strong correlation between what's going on in the gut and some of the neurodegenerative diseases, which is a whole new topic we can talk about, such as Parkinson's, uh, Parkinson's and, and also with uh, other movement disorders. So Parkinson's is huge. A lot of Parkinson's going on. Everyone knows somebody who's got Parkinson's. Dementia, inflammatory conditions in the brain. How did they get there? Well, these things can get in through the blood and they can cross the blood-brain barrier but they can also get direct entry into the brain through your vagus nerve. Did you know that? That you can actually get direct entry into your brain through your vagus nerve. And there are studies now showing that particles that were found originally in the intestine ended up in the brain via the vagus nerve. So I say that the vagus nerve here is very important. Plus, you've got to remember, when you have the wrong bacteria or you have inflammation in your gut, or let's say you have food sensitivities, like you, you're allergic to wheat, wheat germaglutinin. Oh, it's horrible. Wheat germaglutinin is the number one thing that I'm finding in my patients who have either got uh, autoimmune diseases or coronary artery disease or hypertension, metabolic syndrome. The one thing I'm finding is wheat germaglutinin allergy. So it's really a sensitivity. It's not gluten only. People think of celiac disease. No. So what happens with wheat germaglutinin is it causes inflammation here in the gut. So the first thing that's going to get affected by that, or one of the first things that's going to be affected by the inflammation in the gut, is the nervous system in your gut. It's called the enteric nervous system, right? That's the nervous system of your gut. After the brain, the second largest neural network is in your gut. Now, if it is supplying your intestines and your intestines are all messed up, what's happened to that vagus nerve, enteric nervous system? It's messed up. 
So it's sending wrong signals to the brain from the gut. And those signals, remember, it's a two-way channel. So they, they're going up and down, up and down. And in between, there's your lungs, there's your heart, there's your heart rate. No wonder you get all sorts of vasomotor and vasovagal symptoms when you have gut problems. I'll give you an example. A patient came to see me the other day, and she had what is known as POTS. So she had a very high heart rate all the time, and when she stood up, her blood pressure would just drop all the time. Why? Because she got autonomic dysfunction. Because look, you are, you, when you stand up, your autonomic nervous system is supposed to fix everything, right? It's supposed to fix everything by vasoconstricting you. Well, she had inappropriate sinus tachycardia all the time. She also had POTS. So in talking to her, I started concentrating on her gut. And she said, excuse me, I thought you were a cardiologist. I said, I am. <laughs> but it turns out that she had classic symptoms of small intestinal bacterial overgrowth. And I treated it. I gave her some of my herbal preparations, no antibiotics. I just gave her the herbal preparations. And she came back a month later. She's saying, oh my god, I finished this. And I, of course, put on some quercetin and some curcumin later on and, and some other special um, essential oils. And she got better. And she says, I'm no longer fainting. My heart rate has come down. I feel like, like I did before. It's so good. I fixed her heart rhythm through her gut. And I'm saying this all the time. I'm saying this all the time. That arrhythmias, blood pressure anomalies, especially orthostasis, autonomic dysfunction. Autonomic dysfunction, because this is autonomic nervous system. Starts in the gut. You fix the gut. You hack your vagus, fix your gut, hack your vagus, and your autonomic nervous system will reset itself back to where it should be. So you're no longer running sympathetic, sympathetic, sympathetic all the time. So the gut is really, really important, your enteric nervous system. So who, when the enteric nervous system goes wrong, the nerves of your gut, what symptoms are you likely to get? Constipation, because it's just not working. Or diarrhea, where it's working too hard. It's dysfunctional. You want to fix that? You need to fix your gut. The enteric nervous system will get better. When the enteric nervous system gets better, your bowels come back to normal. And your diarrhea goes away, or your constipation goes away. You've got to fix the enteric nervous system. The nervous system in your gut is the vagus nerve coming down and spreading it. And these nerve, this vagus nerve, it is such a vagabond. Every, literally every millimeter or so in the gut has one of its endings. So you're going to ask yourself, what's it doing there? It's feeling everything out. And it's sending back signals to the brain. And we just underestimate this whole thing. We definitely underestimate this whole thing. Hack your vagus nerve. Those enteric nervous system will get better. Your gut will get better too. You having any type of GI symptoms? Start hacking your vagus nerve today. And tell me if your gut symptoms didn't get better. Now, of course, some gut symptoms are not only due to enteric nervous system, they are due to bacterial overgrowth like that girl I was telling you about. Right? She, had, she had SIBO and others have food sensitivity issues where they need to stay away from certain foods. So we do do the blood tests to see which foods are you sensitive to. We do that. If they're having real bad bowel problems, then I check their stools to see which bacteria are missing or which ones are in excess or what can I do to rebalance them. And then we give them fermented foods. We give them high doses of fish oil. So wait a second, what does fish oil got to do with all this? Well, fish oil has omega-3. And guess which, well, what's all these neurons made up of? Omega-3. So wait a second. If, you, if you're not having omega-3 in your body, or enough of it, and I know you don't. Right now, I'll tell you, you don't. You've got a vagus nerve that's not working optimally. I'll just tell you that right now. You see, our omega-3 levels today are so low, it's unreal. I have yet to see maybe one out of 40 labs that come back with omega-3 levels are optimal. It's called omega check. Nobody even checks for it. And the worst part of it is not just omega-3, they have too much omega-6. 
So it's not just omega-3, it's the ratio of omega-3 and 6. So if you have a relatively low omega-3, it's okay if you also have very low omega-6 because it's the ratio that really matters more than anything else. But these days, we are all toxic with omega-6 because we're all eating vegetable seed oils. And then we eat nuts that have been roasted in vegetable seed oils. And we go out and eat too much and all they use is vegetable seed oils. And you're paying for it too. And tipping them on top of it. <laughs> too much omega-6, too little omega-3. Omega-3 is needed especially for one big nerve in the body, and that's your vagus nerve. That's your vagus nerve. You've got to have omega -3. You have to take omega-3 supplements. Now, if you're a total vegan and you can't take fish oil, well, where does omega-3 come from, by the way? Oh, it comes from fish. Well, actually, it doesn't even come from fish. It comes from algae. And the algae get eaten by small fish, sardines, all those, and then they get eaten by bigger fish, bigger fish. It eventually gets to you. The farm ones have no omega-3 in it because I don't see algae down there anyway. So you're going to be careful about just hoping that you're getting all your omega-3s from fish. Good luck, unless you're really eating only wild-caught salmon every day, and then also you've got to eat a lot of it. But then, you know, that's not my advice. My advice is, look, it's easy. Hack the system. Just go and get omega-3 supplements and make sure that it, is, it doesn't contain PCP or dioxin or mercury. So you get a high-quality fish oil. If it smells bad, it's no good. If it tastes good, it's probably okay. It mustn't be rancid. And once you get it, put it in your refrigerator so it doesn't get rancid. Rancid means what? Oxidized. Because if, if your fatty acids get oxidized, they're really bad for you, right? It causes small dense LDL, it causes lipid peroxidation, blah, blah, blah. All the things we talked about on other shows. But bottom line is you, need, you, you, want, a, you want a healthy vagus nerve. A healthy vagus nerve is full of omega-3. And you must hack it frequently. Constantly hack your vagus nerve, then that pathway will be will be facilitated, as we call it. So, here we go. So it stopped here. Oh yeah. Okay. I saw another girl the other day. She, she was having gallbladder issues. So her gallbladder wasn't working. So what innovates the gallbladder? The vagus nerve, right? So with her, we did the same thing. We worked on her gut, and they said they were going to take a gallbladder out. And I said, yeah, well, you've got to follow the instructions, but just try this. And she did, and her symptoms got better. So she, she didn't have a gallstone. So why, what was the problem? She had a lazy gallbladder. So they give you this little medication, and then they look at your contractions on your gallbladder, and her gallbladder just wasn't contracting properly. And sure, that will cause a lot of problems. Right? So my solution for that was, listen, just, just wait a month. Try this. And we worked on her gut and we worked on her maturity and her vagus nerve function. And she did exercises, vagal nerve exercises, and she still has a gallbladder. So I just think that it's very important. Now, I'm not saying that all gallbladders must stay in even if stones. No, I'm not saying that. I'm just saying that there's lots more that meets the eye. Let's just be a little sensitive about this, too. So if you enjoyed this short segment, here's another clip that I think you'll really enjoy. And if you'd like to see the whole video, then click here.